Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for attending this talk from wherever you might be in, this, in the world. Today, Paloma and I will be talking about the development of BibFrame application profiles in the form of cataloging templates for use by the members of the Program for Cooperative Cataloging, also known as PCC. I will start with some background and framing of the project, and Paloma will finish off with a description of our templates and a discussion on the challenges, expectations, and next steps for the project. So to start, LD4, a nascent community built around uh, linked data and libraries formed under the auspices of the Linked Data for Production 2 project, part of a grant series funded by the Mellon Foundation, recently developed this phrase as its vision statement. The world enriched with library data, libraries enriched with the world's data. This is a bold statement that in a very few words sums up the hopes and dreams for, and thus the assumptions about linked data in the libraries. What assumptions does it reveal? Clearly, we imagine a metadata ecosystem in which we provide structured, well-crafted metadata about library resources to the world. And in return, our metadata is enriched by the immensely rich community metadata created by expert communities and ex enthusiasts. And more specifically to the program for cooperative cataloging, we have a focus on using BibFrame as our ontology of choice. RDA is our cataloging standard and on extending our powerful cooperative cataloging ecosystem that has been central to North American cataloging for over 25 years. All this assumes that our linked data is interoperable at some level with all those other sources and that we have the tools and systems to support that data. But the present state of linked data cataloging leaves something to be desired in helping us reach our goals. RDF, the basis for linked data, is a loose specification open to many interpretations in vital areas. BibFrame 2 is also very loosely formed with multiple, at times, inc incompatible modelings for the same entity. A need for extended vocabularies to fill out cataloging requirements and minimal official documentation. On top of that, no official map mappings between RDA and BibFrame exist, and there are no best practices for cataloging, and our tools do not yet connect easily into the broader library ecosystem. In other words, there are no shared standards. Standards, however, are central to the program for cooperative cataloging, as its very name might suggest. PCC has a long provided robust metadata application profiles for cataloging in RDA and MARC, namely the BIBCO standard record or BSR for monographs and the CONSER standard record for serials. And it is itself founded on the premise that for libraries to easily share metadata, there needs to be base sets of basic standards of record creation. But PCC also looks beyond its own community. Its mission statement, which you can see in full on the slide, includes the statement PCC members create trusted metadata and support its use and reuse by global communities. This statement is really not that different from that of LD4, and indeed PCC strongly supports moving towards a linked data environment to support its vision. It does not have the, however, it does not have the ability to create the infrastructure to support a move to linked data on its own. For this reason, it has become an active partner with the Linked Data for Production grant series. Ooh, those are slow. In LD for P2, also known as the Pathway to Production, a cohort of 22 PCC libraries experimented with and cataloged in Synopia, a linked data editor and repository de developed at Stanford University, which Jeremy will be talking about more, <laughs> working primarily on their own local projects, but also contributing to a greater understanding of cooperative cataloging in a linked data environment. As members of various affinity groups, members created a set of common templates for cataloging books and serials, developed basic best practices for template creation, and critiqued both in the Sonopia and BibFrame itself. In the current grant, LD for P3, or Closing the Loop, development has moved from concentrating entirely on Sonopia development to the broader ecosystem and to a closer partnership with PCC. LD for P3 includes the creation of a PCC data pool fed by Synopia created linked data and PCC mark data converted to BibFrame. The pool will be hosted and reconciled by ShareVDE run by Casalini Libri. To support the PCC expansion into linked data, PCC has recently created three task groups to support use of Synopia and PCC. One of these, the task group on PCC Synopia application profiles, 
directly addresses standards and compatibility issues within the PCC community. For a cooperative data pool, uh, whoops. Hmm. Oh, for a cooperative, uh, for a cooperative data pool, we want the data to be consistent and well formed according to PCC standards, which means in the Sinopi environment, shared templates. Our task group, of which Paloma and I are the co-chairs, was charged with developing a PCC-approved set of application profiles to serve the PCC community in Sonopia, as the BIBCO and CONCERT standard records have served the PCC community and MARC. I'll leave the rest of the fine print for you to read if you wish. So why PCC-specific templates? First of all, we want to create near equivalents to the BSR and CSR for the linked data environment. These will standardize modeling of BibFrame, the modeling of relationships between BibFrame and RDA, and encourage the use of particular vocabularies within the PCC ecosystem. Second, the templates will provide a type of branding for PCC cataloging in the linked data environment. The templates themselves have PCC-specific URIs, as do the work and instance entities that are created. And of course, this gives PCC specific control over their own templates. The templates we develop for PCC, however, are not particularly unique or groundbreaking to us since they are already have a long line of predecessors. The Library of Congress was first to create templates usable in a limited fashion by the PCC community for experimentation, although they were developed primarily for internal use. The LD4 profiles and serials affinity groups already mentioned earlier created a set of LD4P templates for community use based on those of the Library of Congress. In doing so, these groups challenged LC on some of its modeling choices, added more vocabularies, and made adjustments based on Sinopia requirements. This interaction between LC and LD4P modeling has been particularly fruitful, improving both sets of templates, and hopefully we will continue doing this in the future. Um, and just as a note, template creation is very complex, and why is that? A cataloging template such as those developed for Sinopia encode multiple layers of multiple standards, all of which overlap, and that sometimes uh, contradict one another. A Sinopia template starts <coughs> with the Sinopia base code, which Jeremy will tell you more about, which then encodes the data models, RDF and BibFrame. On top of this, we add RDA references, labels, and at times vocabularies. We also, through our choice of properties and attributes, make the uh, uh, template equivalent to the BSR or CSR. Finally, vocabularies are standardized, though chosen lookups powered by the Cornell Development Questioning App through the uh, Cornell Develop Questioning Authority app to control vocabularies. Um, the interaction between these layers are complex and not always easily understood. It took many expert metadata librarians to reach the point we are at, and we are very thankful to all of them. And now I'll turn it over to Paloma. Thanks, Nancy. The diagram on the screen shows the main components of a Sinopia RDF template. A resource template defines the modeling of a different class and includes general template metadata such as label, ID, author, creation date, and remarks regarding its use. Each property within the resource template is defined on its own property template, which includes relevant information for validation, like the property attributes and use, such as the remarks, that for PCC templates refer to RDA standards. Properties can be of three types, literal, lookup or URI, and net resource. The fault values can be defined for both literal and URI properties. The PCC templates provide lookup to authority records and cataloging vocabularies hosts on the linked data service of Library of Congress, the GERI vocabularies, the medical subject headings, and OCL CFAST, as well as real world objects such as ISNI, geonames, and Wikidata. Next. The next three slides show screenshots of the linked data uh, edit which Nancy has already introduced and Jeremy Nelson will be discussing in more detail later. It shows the templates in the environment in which they are going to be used. Here you can see the results of a simple search using the keyword PCC. Nancy has talked about the motivation for branding our templates as PCC and this illustrates one of the added benefits. PCC catalogers can access all the relevant templates with one quick search. The main templates display at the top 
There are seven main templates corresponding to the B framework, instance and item for both monographs and serials, plus an administrative metadata template developed as an unnested template to allow institutions to customize it, adding their own default codes and information. The resource template development has changed significantly during Signopia's last work cycle. Now, templates are created and stored as RDF documents and can be previewed in different RDF serializations or copied for its use outside of Synopia. This last screenshot of Synopia shows a lookup property in action. A cataloger can decide what vocabulary to query from the ones defined on the template and receives additional context provided by the question in authority service. Although developed to work in Synopia, the PCC templates aim to provide a common ground modeling for B-frame records produced by members of the PCC community. With this in mind, the task group has also delivered the templates as a tool-neutral metadata application profile for monograph and serial description. These maps are documented in spreadsheets and provide links to the classes and properties RDF files. The template ID also provides a link to the template serialized as JSON-LD. Next, the task group has tried its best to navigate some of the main challenges currently associated with linked data cataloging. We have held long discussions around the modeling of particular B-frame entities, such as primary contribution, contribution, provision activity and series, as well as the appropriate use of certain RDF properties. Since consistent practice is one of the main goals for having shared templates, the task group has followed the Library of Congress lead whenever suitable. That said, Technical differences between the Library of Congress B-Frame Editor and Synopia have made evident the need to follow different approaches or the fact that similar templates sometimes create different shapes of RDF, as it happens with the typing of the B-Frame agent. The task group has also identified system constraints in Synopia that should be addressed in order to improve efficiency in the use and maintenance of the PCC templates. While support for RDF lists resolve an issue with complex target headings, and allowing for subclasses and properties lookups will reduce the number of resource templates needed, probably one issue that stands out in the context of a collaborative cataloging environment is the support for template versioning. We acknowledge that these templates are not a finished work. Ahead is instead, they are the beginning of a conversation within the cataloging community. By making them openly available, the program for cooperative cataloging seeks to provide transparency to their process, hoping to receive feedback and encouraging all implementers to make their modeling openly available as well. The PCC templates also pursue a wider interoperability. Still, there are some standing questions once we move beyond PCC metadata. How do we best approach a common ground with other flavors of B-frame coming from vendors and other libraries? And how do we support B-frame to mark conversion while not simply recreating marking RDF? So far, the task group has done some recommendations to PCC for managing updates and maintenance of the templates that involve the development of a PCC infrastructure for requesting enhancements, bugs, reports, new modelings, etc. Uh, just a quick note, oh, sorry, two minutes approximately. Thank you. Um, PCC Policy Committee will be meeting again in December to discuss the task group's recommendation for Synopia and B-Frame development. Here are a series of relevant links for anyone interested in learning more. Um, Synopia stage is the Synopia server where the PCC templates are currently stored and it is open to anyone interested in exploring them. Finally, but not least, here is the roster to the task group. In addition to Nancy and myself, the group has been extremely likely to count with the expertise of Christine Tisselar Tiedman from the University of Minnesota and Nancy Falgren from the National Library of Medicine, as well as Stephen Folsom from, from Cornell University and Jody Williamson from Library of Congress in a consulting role. These templates would not have been possible without the hard work of the members of the LD4 Profiles and Serials Affinity Group, so a huge thanks to all of them. And of course, thanks to the SWIP program committee for having us here today. We are looking forward to address any questions that you might have. Uh, thank you both. There are quite a few questions that have um, shown up on the Mattermost channel. Julia, did you want to um, take the lead up and read some out? 
Yeah, there was a question coming up quite early already. Um, which of the various distinct bit frame models should are and then there was some more discussion on that topic, what is actually meant by those bit frame models, but maybe you can uh, go ahead and answer that. Um, you cut off just when you said the question, so I didn't, I didn't hear it. Oh, sorry, uh, I posted it in the chat also. Um, the question um, was, which of the various distinct bit frame models should RDA map to? clarify in a, in a follow-up comment that they meant the models that you had presented, uh, the shared VDE BF model versus the BF2 model. Okay. Uh, let's just see if we can see. Um, okay. Um, the BF2, there was no BF2 model. BF2 model, we had BF2 mark. Um, that we do bit frame to mark conversions. That's just the name of the what we call it. Um, we use a I'm sorry, I still don't understand the question. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I think um, I'm, the question was, which of the various distinct bit frame models should RDA map to? Um, a follow-up uh, might have been from someone else that says, what do you mean by distinct bit frame models, bit frame one and two? And then they Oh, okay, I understand. Okay, no, um, we, are, we are working in bit frame 2.0. However, when you actually start modeling bit frame, you can find that there are different, um, different ways that you can actually model the same entity. Um, and uh, because it is very loosely developed. Um, and that's what we mean by various, we, we tend to call them flavors rather than models. Um, 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 our, uh, what should RDA map to? Well, um, I think, um, well, we say there are different flavors. Uh, the, the majority of it works quite well and we should start our mapping RDA to that and then um, work out some common understanding about what the, um, how we should model the other sections that do differ from one another. Sometimes the uh, difference in modeling is simply that some people replace the blank nodes with URIs, um, and this doesn't sound very terrible until you actually try to interoperate and then it can cause difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> 